15 dastardly betrayals, 27 broken hearts, 8 bloody revolutions, 765 deadly bullets, 200 litres of blood. 22 blissful reunions, 1 film festival. Can you get me some water? get water without getting up. Just with my mind. It's such a shame that the only thing you can do with your mind is something that you could just do with your hand. At least I have that, you know? You can't really do anything special with your mind. Well, except stop time. Oh, really, I wasn't aware of that. Can I see an example of that? You really want me to stop time? Yeah. All right. One. Two. Three. My name is Miranda July, and I've never been to Australia before today. And I'm here at the Sydney Film Festival presenting my movie, The Future. This movie, The Future, premiered at Sundance, and I remember uh, being quite nervous, you know, it's a, it's a totally different movie from my first one, obviously, you wouldn't want to make the same one twice. And uh, I remember it, right afterwards, you know, as people were clapping, whispering to my husband, well, that went terribly. Because I wasn't used to the, the feeling of a sadder movie, you know? There's a, there's a kind of unsettled feeling that is a, a really different thing from a movie that ends um, quite hopefully and uh, and it brings about a whole different conversation and I, I was pretty you know, I just didn't know what to think and then I remember right afterwards two different very um, intense smart women my age and a little bit older came up to me and talked to me in a way that no one had talked to me after the first movie and I I just remember like almost crying with relief because those were the conversations I wanted to have and those were the people I wanted to have them with and there was like a level of sort of being seen for who I was now, you know, that, um, that was great. It was a huge relief. People who enjoyed my first movie are now probably six years older um, as I am and Probably a lot has happened in their lives, relationship-wise, and just they're in a different place. And I think a lot of them will be in the right place for this movie. When I was editing my first feature, Me and You and Everyone We Know, I went through an uh, abrupt breakup during that time. So here I was, like, totally upset, but editing this fairly hopeful movie and thinking, God, if I could only get this feeling into a movie, this this dark kind of like like feeling like you wanted to just stop time, like you weren't interested in the life that you were going to be forced to lead from now on. And um, and I wrote that scene pretty early on, the, the scene where a character does in fact stop time in, in the moment of a breakup. My relationship to those characters and that breakup changed so many times over the, the following years, though. I mean, I then met my husband. I you know, became very committed uh, and felt all this love and also was getting older, was like wondering, like, am I going to have a baby? And what's it going to be like to be old with this person? And um, so, you know, the story stayed relevant to me, but it changed, what it meant changed so many times, this, the story of this couple and this moment in their lives. What became so interesting to me as I worked on the movie, first as a performance and then it evolved into a movie, was this, this new feeling about time, which I think maybe it's something you're unaware of in your 20s, you know, in your 20s, you still think maybe you'll have every job and you'll have sex with every person. And then it, it just begins to dawn on you like, no, not only will I not do everything, but I may not even get to do the one thing I want to do most. 
especially if I have to have a baby. <laughs> I mean, that's per, especially for women. And I don't address that head on in the movie. I just didn't want to make a movie about a baby. Uh, frankly, I wasn't addressing it head on in my life either. It was just kind of like a, a lurking feeling. Um, but those, you know, despite myself, despite whatever else the movie was about, it became more and more about those themes. The future premiered at Sundance and at the Berlin Film Festival. And since then, I've been to San Francisco, Seattle, South by Southwest, and now Sydney, which was pretty exciting to me, having never been here. Um, always, somehow, the invitation to come, both for my last book and my last movie, um, somehow it's always seemed kind of late, like I'd been to a lot of other places and was very tired. And I remember thinking, I'm not tired. I can do this, you know? And, and really, that it had grown more meaningful to me over time, this audience. Like, I think having my book published here and, you know, its own specific Australian cover, which is it's very gratifying to see people asking me to sign it here. It's like the first time I've ever signed that edition. Um, you know, you begin to have a relationship with this place that you've never been to and with this audience and these readers. And, um, and just through Facebook and Twitter and things like that, like I felt like, wow, I could go there and, and it, um, it would only be a nice thing for me. I mean, I, I should be so lucky as to have this these people want me to come. So, uh, yeah, and it has been really wonderful so far. I have to tell you something. Okay, if, if, if you're going to say something really bad, could you just wait a moment? Okay, just give me one moment before you say what you're saying. I just want you to know. We both are. How did it happen so quickly? Barry and Carrie, this is Sophie. Hi. Hi. So you're still working here? Yeah. Where are your mothers? Oh, well, they passed away a few years ago. I, I guess you kind of lost touch with them. 